Welcome to another episode. I'm Kay the Guy. So on today's episode, we're talking about worm leachate, what it is, how we make it using our worm composting bin, and also we're going to go into how it is tested under our microscope on today's episode. So this is a follow-up episode to our worm composter setup tutorial, and our compost bin has now been maturing for the past four months inside of our grow area. This is also going to be part two of our microscope assessment of a liquid amendment, which is part two of how to use a microscope to test your soil biology. So on this channel, we like to emphasize growing things, building things, and fixing things, including our soil systems. So if you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to our channel. So this is our Hungry Bin worm composter, and we've been using it now for the past four months. The main ingredient we've been adding is some biologically complete compost we made last fall, as well as putting in some leaf litter, uh, food scraps, and water. So over time, as this system is working, what it's doing is it's decomposing all the organic matter that you're adding. Nitrogen becomes food for bacteria, and the carbon components become the foods for the fungal component. So the more nitrogen you add, the higher your bacterial numbers are gonna be the higher the carbon ratio you're gonna add, the higher the fungal biomass ends up becoming. So you wanna have a good mixture between the both because bacteria and fungi do a really good job of balancing each other out, especially when it comes to soil pH. Now the great thing about this is that there's more plant soluble nutrients that are being broken up and broken down by all the living organisms. They will also bring in vital nutrients that will add that boost of nutrition into your soil, macro and micro and trace minerals. Now you can take this and put it directly on your beds, but you can also take this and turn it into an extraction, which is the process we have of putting the compost into a 400 micron bag and massaging it in water to get all of those organisms and nutrients to essentially pull off the aggregates and into the water and use that for inoculation into your soil beds. The other form of liquid extraction, especially when it comes to worms, is called a worm leachate, which is essentially the liquid that can be drained off as it passively goes through from top to bottom. What we're gonna actually do today is put a cup down there. We're gonna let that water flow through the, and then we're gonna catch what's at the bottom. After that, we're gonna go ahead and check out what we see under the microscope. Now what do we find with the worm leachate liquid sample? At first look, I do see a lot of activity under the microscope here. You can see a lot of little movement of these little creatures swimming around real fast. Our cella up here, which is a good sign. You see a couple of testate amoeba, also another good sign. Those are the predators that we want to see under our microscope. But I do see a lot of ciliates, um, and quite a few actually, a whole bunch here. Here's one particular that is gobbling up all the bacteria around it. You can see those little hairs off of the sides of it that are spinning around and moving all the bacteria in its location so it can gobble them up. See some spirally uh, strands of cellulose here. Now what I'm seeing appears to be anaerobic. So let's figure out why. So after closer inspection, after taking off the bottom of our composter, I found out that this bottom grate here had all kinds of worms uh, stuck, as well as compost stuck inside that grate system, which was not allowing water to drain. There you can see the clog. Also found some really cool predator mites in the lid of our compost bin. Just thought I should get a good shot of that. So at this point, I decided to clean out that bottom filter of our composter. I took that big clump that was stuck at the bottom and spread it out inside this Tupperware bin. That will allow oxygen to dry out most of the material and let it go aerobic again. So as I showed earlier, this is the extract that we made. And now I wanna take a sample and take a look at what organisms I have with this solution, comparing that to our worm leachate. So at first glance, I'm not seeing a whole bunch of activity, which typically most aerobic systems, you don't have a lot of activity unless you're seeing nematodes, which are very active and move around a lot. Uh, what we're first seeing here is that big fat brown arcella with a cluster of fungal spores above and below it. And then that fungal hyphae that's off to the right there that uh, looks to be aerobic. So good signs thus far. 
Here's a couple test date amoeba down below. Again, another good sign of aerobic creatures. Now this is one ciliate that I had found in the entire liquid sample. I had to scan the entire thing. I found one ciliate. So again, a really good sign that this is much more aerobic than the last sample because of the amount of oxygen that we have in this uh, particular solution. Here is a fungal hyphae. Now as we zoom in closer here, you can see all the different organisms around it, some good aerobic ones, some testate amoeba. Now if you notice here, you see little glimmery crystals around the outside of this fungal hyphae. Those are oxalate crystals, which are containing charged nutrients, which are very beneficial. So when you see a fungal hyphae like this, uh, you know it's extremely beneficial. Another characteristic of this fungal hyphae is that it's extremely wide which is another good beneficial characteristic, as well as its dark color. You can see some more testate amoeba here, and a little fungal spore there, a little brown dot. Looks like an amoeba cyst there, which is basically like an amoeba egg. More protozoa here. So we're seeing a lot of really good aerobic predators that are going to cycle nutrients in our system, creating more beneficial nutrient cycling. You can see here a bunch of arcella, more testate amoeba around them. These are the creatures that we want to see the most because they cycle the most nutrients per day. Here's a really good shot of an arcella. You can see all of those uh, bacterial bodies inside of it. So we're really getting a lot of good predatory species within this extract solution. Application of the solution is actually super simple. All we have to do is add it to our watering can and then we can apply it directly to our raised beds. Uh, we're applying it here to our tomatoes. We're also going to apply it to our raised bed for our cucumbers as well to get them a really good head start as we transplant them to their new homes. So just to note, the worm leachate, I did add some of it to one of my boxes of one of my medicinal plants, and about a few days later, it started getting some leaf burn in a few of these stalks. So that was the effect of having that anaerobic solution going into a particular medium, and that was the result, was I ended up with some leaf burn. So being able to look under your microscope and see what you're looking at and quantify what you're looking at and being able to add it to your soil to help your plants is really not all that difficult. You really just know what to look for and then just being selective in your process of doing so. And then you want to make sure that everything is as aerobic as possible. If you have any questions about today's video, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like this video so YouTube shares it with more people and subscribe so you don't miss any of our new content. Thanks for joining and we'll see you in the next one.